I'm Larry Larson and we're here with Ziad from the Office Group and today we're going to talk about the OpenXML SDK from Office and uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and how long you've been at Microsoft. Sure, so my name is Ziad Rajabi. I've been a program manager for about five years now. I came to Microsoft directly from school, graduated from McGill University up in Canada and I've been on the same team on Microsoft Word the whole time and been pretty exciting for five years. And for people who might not know uh, what OpenXML is, tell us about that. Sure. So OpenXML is not anything new to Office 2010. It was introduced back in 2007, and it's basically a file format that is a lot more open than our old binary format. So if you think about it, our binary format is just very opaque. If you want to do something with it, well, you pretty much needed the application or full understanding of the binary format itself. With OpenXML, it's just a zip file with many XML parts in it. So it's very open and transparent. And so this was in Office uh, 2007. What's changed since then with the Office 2010 release? Well, with Office 2010, we added a bunch of new features across the three applications, Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. And with these new features, you needed a new way to represent them within the file format. And what we did is we extended the file format, and we added those features to the format itself. And tell us about the OpenXML SDK. Sure. So something that we developed in Office 2010 is a way for developers to go and actually interact with these file formats in a much, much easier way. So in the past, yes, there were zip files and they're XML and you can actually have access to them using just .NET and system.io.packaging. But what we wanted to do is make it very easy for developers to go and manipulate these files. So what we developed is something called the OpenXML SDK. And what the SDK does is it allows developers to go and create, manipulate, or consume these files, either on the client or on the server, without even needing Office at all. And how would they work on the client and the server? Can you give us a scenario or two about that? Sure. So the SDK really accomplishes three main scenarios for you really, really well. So it's able for you to push data into the file, where data could come in from other files, from a database, from a web form, from anything, and you want to push it into a file. It's able to do manipula manipulation. So if you take a file, you can do something to it and end up with another file. So a good example of that is let's say you have a Word document with comments, track changes, some personal information. Well, what you can do is you can actually sanitize that document and remove all the comments, remove the track changes, remove the personal information all in one shot with the SDK. And lastly, it's able to pull information out of a file. So let's say you have a spreadsheet with charts, some tables, and some cells with values of, of data inside there. You're able to use the SDK to pull and extract that information out and put it into anything you want. So customers want to work with document assemblies. How does that work with the, uh, the Office SDK, OpenXML SDK? So the fundamental issue with document assembly is all about taking pieces of content from, in this context, come from databases, from different files, from Office files, from what have you, and be able to assemble them all, maybe on demand or, or based on some kind of rule, and assemble a resulting document. And the SDK really accomplishes that really well because of the push and pull concept that I told you about before. So let's take an example. So let's imagine a scenario where I'm an analyst working on a report. And maybe I'm, a, I'm trying to analyze a company or a stock, and I need to come up with a, a pretty rich report. And you can imagine these reports are pretty rich. They could contain maybe an overview of the company, some charts, some tables of data, uh, maybe even some analysis documents, basically a whole gamut of information there. Typically, these kind of reports are done more with more than one person across many different files. So what I can use is I imagine I can create a library of documents where each of these documents rep represent sort of chunks or pieces of my final report. I can have people working on these different pieces, and then when they're all done, I can use the SDK or some kind of solution built on top of the SDK to go and extract the relevant pieces and inject them into the final document. So at that point, you can really create this end-to-end -end document assembly type of solution. What are the biggest advantages of the SDK? So one of the big, the, the most common KB article we have for Office today talks about how automating Office client applications is not supported. But the funny thing is, if you actually go take a look at this KB article, not only does it tell you it's not supported, but it goes to great lengths telling you actually how to go do it. So on the one hand, we tell customers not to do it. On the other hand, we give them tips on how to do it. We know they need to do it. Yeah, we, we know they need to do it. In fact, a few years back, we went on a customer visit and this customer took us to a room full of servers. And I think there was like 100 machines in this room. And to our astonishment, each and every one of these machines were running one instance of Word, which is crazy. Because if you think about it, these machines were the latest and greatest hardware, tons of CPUs, tons of RAM. And they were willing to waste all that CPU power 
by just running one instance of Word, because Word can only use one CPU at a time. Mm -hmm. Not only that, because of automating Office client on the server has a bunch of problems. If you have a dialog that pops up, your automation is completely halted. If something happens, your automation is completely halted. So what these guys did is they hired people to go and reboot these machines every few hours. That was their job, yeah. to go reboot these machines. And that's what I consider the old school world of Office documents. And what does the new school method look like now? Well, the new school method consists of three components. The file formats, and which I talked about earlier, and the file formats make it much easier to go and deal with these files without even Office installed. The SDK associated with the file formats, which makes it easy to go and manipulate these files. And the last component is Office services. So I'm talking about Excel services and Word automation services, which is part of SharePoint 2010. And what tools are available for someone to learn about OpenXML now? So there is a tool that ships with the OpenXML SDK called the OpenXML SDK Productivity Tool. And the tool provides a bunch of really cool features for developers. So the first thing it does, it provides all the documentation associated with the file format, the SDK, and any kind of notes that we have in Office against the file format. So the standard, and that's one thing I forgot to mention, is the OpenXML file format is a standard in ISO. And the standard dictates or specifies certain things about the file format. So for example, it can say a particular XML element, it can be any string value. Well, some applications have restrictions, and Word, Excel, and PowerPoint are no exception. So instead of being able to support any length string, sometimes our applications have certain restrictions. Maybe our, our application can only handle 1,000 characters. Well, any of these types of notes are actually documented, and they're part of the tool, and you can get access to that. So that's the documentation aspect of the tool. The second thing the tool does, and I think this is probably the coolest feature of the tool, is what we call the document ref uh, the code reflection part. And what this does is it allows you to actually automatically generate code for a given document. So let's say, for example, you want to know how to actually create a Word document or a particular paragraph or a table using the SDK or the XML. You can go read the documentation and go figure that out. Or what you can do is, is you can use the application that you know how to use. Use Word. Open it up, add the paragraph, add the table, add whatever content you want inside there, save it out, open that document in the tool, and then hit reflect code. And what nice. reflect code will do is it will actually automatically generate all the open XML SDK code necessary to create that document. Even Very better nice. than that, yeah, it's really cool. But even better than that is if you don't want to generate the entire document and you want to generate only pieces of it, maybe you just want to care about the first paragraph. Well, you can dive down into that tree in the XML tree, find that first paragraph, and it will not only show you the XML snippet, but it will actually show you the SDK code associated to create that particular snippet. That's great. It's a really cool tool. So the tool's great, and one of the things that you mentioned was Office Services. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So I talked about how the SDK accomplishes three main scenarios, push, pull, and manipulate. But I think I should know what the SDK doesn't do. So it doesn't do any kind of file converting for you. It's not going to take a Word document and convert it to PDF. It's not going to be able to take, do runtime behaviors for you, such as recalculate an entire workbook with its formulas and regenerate your charts or repaginate your document and tell you, well, this word here exists on the sixth page. It doesn't have this layout technology. Where the SDK falls short, this is where services comes in. So one new service we added to, to SharePoint 2010 is called Word Automation Services. And what this service allows you to do, it's all about file converting right on the server. So any file that Word knows how to read, the service knows how to read. Any file that Word knows how to write out, the service knows how to write out. So you can actually take a docx, convert it on the service to PDF if you wanted to. So now if you combine that technology with the SDK, you can do some generating of many, many Word documents. Maybe you want to generate hundreds of invoice statements. And then you can take those hundreds of invoice statements and you can run them through the Word automation service to create a bunch of PDFs, for example. Excel services is all about recalculating your formulas and regenerating your, your, your charts. So you can imagine a scenario where you can push and pull data in and out of an Excel spreadsheet with the SDK, and then whenever you need to regenerate your charts or recalculate your formulas, call into Excel services. So by combining the SDK and the services, you really have and you really can achieve an end-to-end -end solution for your scenario. And for someone who wants to ramp up their knowledge of open XML, where, what, where are the places to go to get started? So the, the best place to get started is on MSDN. And if you go to msdn.com slash office slash XML, you'll find a bunch of articles, how-to videos, and a bunch of documentation and forums around the SDK. 
And the, the second place I want to I want to reference people to is my blog. And in fact, it's actually my boss's blog. And you can find it by searching for Brian, B-R-I-A-N Jones, J-O-N-E-S. And I have a bunch of blog posts, a bunch of solutions and code that people can go use around using the SDK plus Office services. And of course, you can always keep coming back to Channel 9. Channel 9 is a great resource. And thank you so much for talking to us today. My pleasure. Thanks very much.